I cannot see a way forward for the Eurozone in its present form. It either has to become a fiscal union, uh, which is very difficult for the reasons we know. I mean, the objections of not only just Germany, where the objections will be stronger, not stronger, but everyone else as well. Um, can it be done by issuing um, European bonds by the um, central bank? I don't know. Um, I think there will be objections again to the, uh, the, Germ the Germans will become effectively lenders of last resort if that happens. Um, what about the um, European um, financial mechanism, which is supposed, to, which will take, as far as I understand it, uh, 27 parliaments to agree to before it can be set up, uh, and with possibly enough money in it. Uh, that would be a way forward, but it's, it's the the it's so criti critical at the moment. Uh, we don't need a solution three years down the track. We need it now, and we need, as everybody says, but this is I'm mean, just repeating. We need leadership, and we and we haven't got any. Well, if people start quarrelling among themselves, if people start. Um, thinking that they would be better off out if, other, if people think that one state or, or the other is getting uh, an easier ride than, than another one. Of course this causes quarrels, but the drive for your, to maintain European Union and to be in it is still pretty strong. Um, it, it, of course it could happen. I mean, families quarrel and, 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 and they break up. But that is not necessary. I think the European Union can go on. Um, the Eurozone, I'm uh, cannot surely go on in its present state. And um, I think Germany's um, commitment to European unity uh, will possibly pull us through a lot of the political problems which you're talking about, though economic problems, financial problems, I don't know. The whole incident is quite extraordinary. I understand that he was, as Chancellor of the Exchequer, he was made to able to take that decision entirely by himself, uh, without consulting the rest of the cabinet, without consulting anyone in the Treasury, which he may have done. He was able to do that entirely by himself, just as a foreign secretary in Britain is able technically to take a country to war without consulting anybody. In the First World War, was the Sir Edward Grey, I think, um, came to the House of Commons and uh, said, uh, I've, declared, I've declared war on Germany. Uh, everyone cheered, it was all right. Um, but uh, in the same way, <laughs> the Chancellor of Exchequer was able to sell off these vast amounts of our gold reserves um, on his own say so, and without telling anybody. We didn't know about it for a long time afterwards. Um, it, that doesn't answer your question, was have we been weakened? Uh, we must have been weakened. But um, I, we, we've got enough in reserve, and our economy is, you know, we, we are fairly balanced in our approach to it. Our debts are bad, but we are, we are, nobody thinks we're going to default on them so far. So many people have opinions about that. Do I think there's a chance in some form or another? Um, you can't look that far ahead, but it is very interesting how who is buying gold uh, among the uh, third world in India, China, and everything else. Um, I cannot believe that the dollar is going to survive as the only reserve currency. Um, if there's going to be another reserve currency, on what will it be based? I don't know. This is an area which, uh, looking into the future, um, I, dare, dare I say, we historians look at the past, not the not the future. But uh, it, it's it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I hope I'll be alive. Well, China, China obviously has a, has a great interest in 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 the dollar maintaining its value, um, and we don't know exactly what China does hold, but we know that it's, it's vast amounts. Of their, of their of gold, of dollars, and of other currencies, um, the, the things look pretty tricky between um, Peking and I must say Beijing, and uh, Washington 
two or three months ago. They're looking r rather better now. But I, I've always thought until these two vast countries um, get together, not, uh, their heads are banged together, uh, and they work out some new world system, uh, nothing will happen. I think it, this is a, it's a key, but it's again, it's um, is it going to happen this year, next year? They've got to get together. They because they they're not quite like two drunks holding each other up, but they're 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 totally dependent on each other and 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 and, and how they will go forward. Oh yes, like anything. Um, the and and. The French, for example, knew what was happening, but they were, they were so determined to hold Germany down and get as much gold as they could out of Germany that they were, uh, they were not helping very much. But no, um, in, in a great many um, uh, in Britain and in America were saying, you've got to pull yourselves together. And, and in Germany itself, the, there were people who understood uh, the basic monetary theory. The trouble was that the, there was no one in the bank and almost no one in the government um, who didn't think inflation was the only way through because they all blamed it on not on the printing of money. They said the printing of money was necessary because of the speculation, because of the inflation. They got it utterly the wrong way around. And there were enough people around um, in Germany and in the German newspapers uh, commenting, saying the president of the Reich Bank must be, uh, who's a president for life, uh, must be sacked. Um, and you know, it, it was understood what was happening, but those who could do something about it either didn't dare to, uh, because because of the fear for the outbreak, outbreak of um, uh, unemployment and, 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 and rioting, which was going on anyway, um, and those who just didn't understand. Good question. Um, notice how the Keynesians always seem to be in opposition. They're, they're not the people who've got to take these difficult decisions. They're, um, they're the people in, in this country, for example, they're saying we ought to relax um, relax the money supply, make easy money, get, get the economy moving again, get some stimulus into the thing. Um, and so, so there's a sort of self-generating Keynesianism among, among people who think they know better than those who have actually, are, are actually having to do something about it. A leading Keynesian in this country, who may as well remain nameless because I know him, um, and wrote a book about Keynes a lot short time ago, um, he ended an article in the FT not very long ago saying, and if this goes on, after all, we can always print money. This terrifies me. Now that also happened to a member uh, this last week um, to a member of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England, uh, who is um, one of the doves, saying we've got to do some more QE here. And he said the, the analogy is very close to a doctor who thinks that a cure is working, uh, that some medicine is working. But if it's not, he steps up the dose, doesn't he? Well, this is what one doesn't do. Um, I don't. I can't answer. I don't, I'm not quite certain. But I, as far as I know, it was stocks right across the board. They buy anything. By the time you're getting rid of your um, your money, and that's the one thing you had to do, because everything was going up, the stock market was going up, whether it was bank shares or industrial shares, um, industry. But after all, we're doing extremely well for a time. Um, in the because credit was so cheap, people were putting up factories, which often didn't produce anything. Um, and those factories went on not producing anything until Hitler found he had the spare capacity to, to start an arms program, but, uh, which is another unintended consequence of, of inflation, really. Well, the Zimbabwe one was a totally cynical one, and the, the idea was just to get it was to get rid of debt and to, to pay off debts. Um, the, um, the German one was exceptional because uh, first it was so large, though Austria and Hungary, which had um, 
simultaneous uh, in inflations, and, and uh, but got out got out of them rather faster. Um, because this, these these were advanced economies, uh, where where um, you had a, a social and industrial base, which was destroyed, and therefore it was, and, and perhaps was much more vulnerable to inflation than places like Brazil and so on, which doesn't seem to matter very much. At some stage, you, you start to panic. The point about hyperinflation is it, it, the definition of it, the popular definition is, is in the month when uh, inflation reaches 50% for the first time, which is the 600% a year um, equivalent. Um, and by that time, if you are losing money at that stage, you like, are panicked. But long before that, you, you are trying to get rid of your money or wondering what, what's going on. Um, and you stop trusting it. I mean, and money being the, your only, it's so important in so many ways. It's your, well, it's your sense of security, it is your sense of social position, it is your future, it is everything. And it's the one way of measuring what everything is worth. And once you don't know, you, you can't measure what everything is worth, you're, you're lost. It's pathetic, but I mean, you know, whether money is gold or coconuts, it's, um, if you trust it, it's important.